What's up, everybody? Hey, this is Phil from Walmart, Right Lane Trucking. It is Thursday. Uh, I haven't had a chance to upload my video yet from yesterday, but uh, I made it through 299. I'm now on 101. I uh, just stopped at a rest area here uh, to use the facilities, but um, it is definitely redwood forest uh, country. Um, some of the trees here do not seem that big, but you take a look here I'll show you look this one behind me that fell or yeah fell down I think it's huge let me let me get a little closer so you can kind of get an idea of how big it is that's just the stump these things are huge um, and I'm not even at the uh, major part yet um, on the way to Crescent City, there's you have to go through uh, quite a bit of redwood trees in the forest there, redwood forest. So, but some of these have just fallen down or been cut down because of the size of them and uh, the danger of them falling. Um, but take a look. Hold on, I'm gonna switch it around. So look at all. And just goes up. It's huge. So it took me about three hours from where I parked last night to where I'm at now. And I still got about another 55, 60 miles to go to get to Crescent City. But look at those things. Those are just the stumps, man. Things are huge. All right, I uh, said in my last video that uh, when I came here the first time, I stopped and laid over at a rest stop. That rest stop is the southbound rest stop. This is the northbound rest stop. And it's about two miles south of where I'm at now. So, um, but... Uh, yeah, I got to get on road, get back. Uh, I got to get this there so I can uh, at least get through and back over to Red Bluff uh, before day's end. So uh, let me show you. Look, there's there's Wally. I uh, can't see me anymore. I'm all darked out. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's so nice to just get out of the city and be able to, to come to something like this beautiful i'll be filming again uh because on the way back i want to get a shot um picture of me the same location i took a picture of six months ago or yeah about six months ago five and a half um and uh see the difference and each time i go i want to take a picture there so we'll see all right guys talk to you soon well, what's up everybody hey i uh, got out of uh the rest area and uh, on my way to Crescent City, ran into some more construction. So they've been working on this uh, 101 spot since the last time I was here. At least this time they uh, have traffic flowing closer to the mountainside. Uh, last time there was a rock slide real close to the road. I mean, it covered the whole roadway and they had you going over it closer to the cliffside. This time, when you're going through, you're closer to the uh, mountainside and uh, away from it. So, uh, <laughs> that caused, the stop that I made to go use the restroom, had I not had to do that, and uh, that traffic there, uh, I would have made it to Crescent City Store. As it is, um, I had to stop just short, just to make sure that I got my meal in before the fifth hour. I hate these meals, hate these meals. Um, but, uh, so I got Wally stopped on the side of the road, but hey, I'm sorry guys, if you're trucking somewhere else, I'm sorry, but I gotta show you where I'm at. All right, look at that. Look at that, that's uh, Pacific Ocean right there. And I literally just turned around, so. 
that's how close uh, Crescent City is to the beach. Uh, it's a nice little community, beach community. Um, but what a view. What a view. This is the way to go. Um, now, I grew up next to the beach, so it kind of, you know, I'm a little spoiled like that. But um, I don't get to the coast very often uh, because I live in Central Valley now. So whenever I can, I enjoy it. Uh, but the waves... The tide is not so bad here, but uh, earlier on 101, uh, you could just see the, the waves just crashing uh, hard, hard. Uh, some of them I saw a few good waves, but uh, uh, yeah. So I'm just on my meal uh, trying to wait 30 minutes less than now, but uh, I only have to go a little bit over that way. And... I'm literally like three, four miles away from the store. So I'll be there shortly, but I clocked in at 24 and I clocked out for my meal at 21. So and by the time you get one light, get caught up, I'm not gonna be able to clock out in time for the, for it. So oh, I wish this was smell -o vision that salty sea air oh that it's just great i love it i love it uh i don't want this run all the time though uh, this run uh is is very time consuming going through the uh 299 and even 101 at points uh very time consuming so like i said i started my day at 724 it's 1221 took me five hours to get to where I'm at now so uh, it's gonna take quite a bit of time to get back once I get headed back so uh, yeah it uh, it's gonna be tough I'm gonna probably have to overnight in Red Bluff most likely so I want to get this delivered and try to get through most of the uh, pass if not all of it before it gets too dark so I'm gonna go grab something to eat and I'll talk to you guys later. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Hey, I'm just taking uh, my second meal and I'm on my way back to Red Bluff uh, from Crescent City. So I just want to check in. I actually stopped at the other rest stop now, uh, two miles down, going southbound on 101, uh, the one I overnighted at last time I was here. Um, but uh, no intention of overnighting tonight. I've got five hours left on my clock, uh, drive time anyway, and uh, I've got 190, 191, I think it is, 191 miles uh, to Red Bluff. So I'll definitely get uh, through 299. We'll see uh, if I make it all the way to Red Bluff. I should, it just, it just depends on how slow going um, the 299 is on the way back uh, I am empty this time so going up the hills uh, it shouldn't take as long so that's good now what I wanted to say on this one is there's a little town north of here called Ulrich O-R-I-C-K O and then Rick um, and just like three miles up from there there is a little well I thought it was a house uh, but it has a sign out front it says uh, elk viewing and when I was driving northbound uh, nobody was there yet nobody was out there uh, looking or doing anything uh, but on the way back wow wow um, there was some tourists that had stopped off in the parking lot that they have there and and I looked over because I saw those cars there so I, I looked over a little bit further and sure enough, there's an elk just lounging in the, in the field there. So I don't know if that's their pet elk or they just feed the elk and they come and they, uh, they lounge in the field there. So that was pretty cool. He was huge too, uh, big, big elk. And uh, I'm gonna have to go through the videos from earlier that I got on my dash cam 
uh, because I got to dig through the whole bash cam video to see if I can, if you guys can see it. But I think I might have seen like eight or nine deer, ten deer this morning. Two of which just decided they wanted to take a little parade right in front of me as I'm coming. Um, and they just walked right across uh, the road. Well, one started walking first, and I saw it way in advance, and I slowed down, and I sounded the horn, and sure enough, by sounding the horn, the other one that was still in the bushes came darting out. So it's a good thing I slowed down, and it's a good thing I sounded the horn, because had I continued after the first one cleared, uh, the other one might have uh, decided it wanted to join its friend and come across the street as well. So um, luckily I didn't, uh, I let them both get across. But um, yeah, 299, 730, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning, probably not a good time to be uh, driving because uh, that's where the deer are right there by the road. Um, and uh, at one point I saw three of them together. Uh, so, you know, they come out in groups of two, three, four, sometimes, uh, it just depends. Sometimes they're just by themselves. So you got to watch out for that. Uh, but I've got, uh, just a couple more minutes on my meal and, uh, then I got to get going. So I'll see you in Red Bluff. Bye. Hey, hey, what's up everybody? This is Phil from Walmart Right Lane Trucking and yes, I made it to Red Bluff. Yeah. All right, um, so the beginning of the video is gonna have me hyperspacing it through some of the uh, terrain on 299. Uh, if you didn't see it on the, on the front part when you, before you got to this part, go back and watch it again. You'll see those two deer. I kind of put a little note in there um, about the two deer. Um, I saw so many deer uh, on the way there not as many on the way back but I did see more on the way back so I went through there I started my day at 724 this morning so when I got rolling you know the sun's coming up and uh, or is up and and the, the deer are out and I, I want to say I saw about eight to ten of them uh, just going through uh, 299 to 101 and uh, from there then uh, on the way back I saw some more so uh, it was you know it's a beautiful drive don't get me wrong it is a beautiful drive uh, if you're in a little sports uh, car with a convertible top uh, or on the motorcycle uh, I would definitely enjoy that drive a lot better than having to uh, drive a sleeper style tractor with a 53 foot trailer on the back um, it it is truck worthy uh, however it you know it, it's as I said last night's video it's not for the faint of heart you know you've really got to stay focused the entire time uh, otherwise you're gonna be going off the side of it um, and I don't know if any of the videos you'll be able to see see it but you've got the yellow center line the double yellow center that divides the two lanes and then you've got the white fog line or the white line on your right your passenger side and there's maybe inches inches of asphalt past the white line maybe an inch two inch three at times and it's it's really not a lot of space so then you're you know in the cliff or off the side whatever uh, so you've got to really watch uh, your tandems on the back when you're going around corners uh, and the, the setup of the video um, the camera was a little off it wasn't quite centered so you're getting uh, a little bit closer view of the uh, cliff sides there but um, th that's a true representation of 299 you don't have a lot of room uh, if you're on the mountainside versus the the river side uh, because 
a lot of the the pass for 299 is more of a canyon and you're following the path of the river that goes uh, down the canyon and towards the ocean so it, it's there's not a lot of space and uh, but it it definitely will keep you on your toes so I was right I made better time coming back empty than I did going with a load uh, obviously you know the weight going up and down the hills uh, and around corners um, really makes a difference and you can you can climb up the the, the grades a lot a lot easier without anything in the trailer so I definitely made better time on the way back I got back to Red Bluff with uh, 40 43 minutes or something like that well I clocked out I stopped my clock at the gate with 39 minutes left on my drive time for today um, out of my 11 so I drove 10 hours and 21 minutes today but not as many miles as I would have liked I mean the it, it uh, you would think with 10 hours 20 20 minutes I'd have a, a few more miles than I do uh, I ended the day with 440 miles but very little activity because I woke up uh, like I said last night I was on the side of the road at this pullout that I found and uh, it was on 299 but just east about 10 miles east of uh, Douglas City and but if you were looking on the map on Google map Lewiston is directly north of me so I saw as I went in the morning that there's a turnout for that or street to turn out and road that goes to Lewiston Lewiston um, but um, that's about where I was when I started and then uh, all the way to Crescent City and then back to Red Bluff um, all of it man it was all windy uphill downhill grades mountainous grades it wasn't all flat um, so you really have to stay on your toes so there's a few things I want to talk about today and one of that is the beginning part of my video is how do you handle animals on the side of the road because they're unpredictable aren't they you never know what they're gonna do are they gonna stay there are they gonna dart out in front of you uh, are they gonna run back into the forest or the hills and 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 go away and not get in your path or are they gonna just meander right out in front of you just lollygagging and in, in, in the road um, so I don't encounter this very often and the last one was the trip up to uh, Yreka I took some video I showed you guys that uh, a lot of a lot of deer that day and a lot of deer today um, I think I've only really had a few other encounters um, I had one on my motorcycle uh, that kind of freaked me out it's a little bit more um, and that was down near my area um, it, you know the Central Valley area I was going through the mountains uh, from say Patterson area over to the San Jose area but I, I, I took the mountainous path to go do that and there's some deer through there and um, so the only other like wild animal that I, I came across and it was up in the field and it wasn't in the road was a, a moose and that was in New Hampshire uh, the house that my mom had uh, was way out in like central New Hampshire 
and up on a hill and there's this field out there right by your house and you have to come up a dirt road and then the dirt road curves to the right and right there was uh, this giant moose just standing right there so what do you do when you come to that do you stop do you continue going hoping that they're gonna stay on their side of the road do you sound your horn <coughs> I mentioned that I sounded my horn I was far enough away from the one that was in the roadway at the time it doesn't look like it in the video uh, because it was on hyperlapse and there's only so much I could do to slow that down and and show that they were there but um, the first one just was kind of just walking across and and I was already slowing down so I sounded the horn and I didn't see the second one until after I sounded my horn and it came darting out from behind the bush uh, on the right hand side passenger side of the roadway and they kind of darted across the driver's side towards the river side so what do you guys do I mean hey I'm still I, I'll call myself a rookie because until I have 40 years of driving I'm gonna call myself a rookie but um, wow it's it, it's it's one of those things you just gotta you gotta go with right all right so just be careful for that if you're driving in those times of day dusk and dawn uh, that's when they tend to come out and they tend to congregate by the roadway um, at night you're gonna you can see them at night too but in midday you can see them midday as well but it's more often that they come out right after sunrise and, and dawn and then um, dusk uh, at night uh, they're they're out and they're active so be careful now driving curvy roads I talked about this the other night you know and I just talked about it you've got to keep yourself centered right you can't be all over both lanes uh, when you're on a two-lane road so you got to stay on your side of the double yellow and you got to stay on <laughs> the roadside of the white so it's a tricky one and you know there's some there's some hairpin turns along uh really it got worse probably i think hairpin turns on 101 than it did in 299 but there's still some spots on 299 that uh you have to really reduce your speed and make those turns uh really tight and still stay in your lane and because you got oncoming traffic and you, you might not know that they're coming because the reason I ran the dash cam today is because there's a lot of blind intersections blind corners that you just can't see what's on the other side so you really need to slow down and when I went up to Hermiston, Oregon, and then I was going over to Montana. Another driver told me, he said, Hey, you really need to watch out for those signs. Really listen to those signs. If they say 25, go 25 or less. Uh, you know, have respect for those signs that are posted. Those ones that say, Hey, it's 30 miles an hour. Hey, take this curve at 40 miles an hour. Hey, take this one at 15. You really got to have some respect for the fact that those signs are there for a reason and they're not just for cars now you're gonna go oh I could take that corner at it says 25 I've taken that corner at 35 40 miles an hour there they don't know what they're talking about okay you got lucky you got lucky I, I had to do an investigation uh, and this is just getting on the freeway right just getting on the freeway uh, driver uh, had turned his uh, tractor over on he rolled it over on the side getting on the on-ramp in the Oakland area now it was a container uh, those things are usually a little more top-heavy the chassis uh, the support for the chassis 
uh, aren't the best. Um, the locks, as long as they're locked in, they're usually pretty good. As long as you're making sure all four of the locks are locked. But you take a corner at, you know, faster than it's recommended to take it, you're going to go for a ride onto the side. And so I rode with the driver the night after uh, the rollover. He was fine. A little shooken up, but uh, he got right back to work the next day. And um, we did a, a follow-up ride. So we, when the driver was involved in an incident, it, it warranted a, a, a management person to do a ride along assessment evaluation of their performance. And so we took the same core, it was same, same route he was doing. So we took the same corner and as he's taking the corner, I'm in the passenger side and I'm lifting my butt up off the chair, leaning over towards him, looking at the speedometer and then said, is this how fast you took it last night? Oh yeah, 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 that was about that fast. Well, he, well, he was going about 25 miles an hour around this corner the night I rode with him. Well, the night, the night before, we were able to see that he took that corner actually at 10 miles more an hour than what he took it with me sitting in the passenger seat. So it, it only takes 10 miles an hour, guys. It, difference, that's all it takes. The night he uh, rode with, I rode with him 25 miles an hour. The night he uh, flipped it over, it was 35 miles an hour. Makes a huge difference. So listen to those signs. Slow it down. Slow it down, otherwise you're gonna find yourself jackknifing, rolling over, or, or something stupid, going off the side of the road. Because that curb, you think it's just a nice sweeping, sweeping left or sweeping right, nice and easy, and then it just jacks it hard and it makes it more of a hairpin turn. So, especially if you're not familiar or you don't drive it every day. Even if you drive it every day, you need to respect it, okay? So, construction zones is the other thing I wanted to talk about. 299 just full of construction. I'll say it wasn't as many construction zones as the last time I came through, but the construction zones are, are huge. And you can see in the video that I've got playing above here regarding construction zones, They've got 299 down to where they have to pilot or have a tr vehicle in front escorting vehicles through this construction area. And that's because uh, they're doing a lot of work with a lot of big equipment. And so they want people going a certain way and then zigzagging this lane or that lane over uh, to avoid it while they're still trying to do some work. Um, at one point we came to a stop and you could see the equipment down uh, this a ways away from where I was parked at the time you could see the equipment parked or working down below on the street level or on the road highway level but way up top way way up top they had more equipment up there clearing clearing rock and debris and trees and, and other things from way up on the cliffside, and they had they had a fire go through there, so obviously noticeable uh, fire damage, and then that caused uh, unsteadiness with the rocks and and the mud, rain, and whoop! There we go. It had a rock slide. Uh, down right onto the roadway so they've been working on 299 not only to clean up the rock slide that they had but to stabilize that cliff face as well as clear 
all the, the, the dead trees or the trees that got burnt off the cliffside and secure that so that doesn't cause more slides in that area. And so they've got where they've been trimming or cutting down the trees. Then they're taking them and grading them up and just then putting the putting the, the uh, shreddings back on the cliffside. It's pretty cool. Um, so that one, they don't have to haul away the trees. Two, it actually puts some more landfill or cover, ground cover on that hillside. And so we'll see what, what happens with some, some good rain through there, if that sticks and, and everything else. But, um, and then I talked about 101. Uh, 101 was working, they've been working on 101 since the last time I went through. I think that rock slide happened just prior to me um, coming on with Walmart and they were working on it and um, or maybe just prior to me taking that, that load that time. Um, but um, they're working on shoring it up. Uh, the the cliff side uh, on both sides not just the the one closest the cliff side closest to us but the one going down towards the water as well um, they're they're pouring cement and really creating a man-made cliff basically on that side closest to the water uh, to secure that so that doesn't fall down and then they're doing a lot of uh, removal of the um, the cliff side as well on the um, away from the water side I guess the east side of it um, to shore it up but they've been working on that for five six months now so it just takes time so what am I getting at what am I getting at okay so I had a conversation with one of the uh, supervisors for uh, I don't know if he was Caltrans he looked like he was Caltrans um, or just the company that was doing the work and because when I first came up to where they were gonna pilot us through I stopped where the flagger did and then they said okay follow this red pickup truck so I followed the red pickup truck well the red pickup truck stopped and, and or continued on and I came to another flagger and he came up and he just kind of flagged with the flag to the left and I'm thinking okay so I go to the left so I started going to the left and I'm like do I go through or am I just what what do you want me to do so I rolled down the window and he says oh no just park over there to the left so what they're doing is they're using that area to stage vehicles so that when the pilot is ready to go, everybody just follows the pilot vehicle through and, and everything else. Well, so I had stopped off to the left side of the road. Lady comes up, another worker comes up, says, hey, uh, you can't park right here. Okay, well, he just directed me to here. So where do you need me to be? And she goes, well, you see that flagger sign back there? I need you to back up to that. Okay, I can do that. I can back up to that. Just make sure nobody's behind me. And um, then she goes, no, no, no. Just go ahead and go down and park behind that other semi down there on the right. So I did. And, and I got down there and I parked. And next thing I know, this nice gentleman came over and him and I had this conversation. And, you know, he was asking what the conversation I had with the other flaggers, uh, his, his flaggers earlier. And I said, you know, they, the one young man, he didn't really give me very good directions. And then the young lady came, said I couldn't park there and directed me up. So he's like, yeah, I just need to know, you know. But what I guess what I'm getting at with this long, grown out thing is pay attention to the flaggers listen to them watch out for the construction teams and you should be fine but uh him and i had a good conversation he knows it wasn't me 
uh, and uh, everything else, and that I understood exactly what what I was supposed to understand. Um, but unfortunately, they gave me bad information. So just be careful in construction areas. Keep your wheels on the road. Don't be when you're going around corners. Stay in your lane and watch out for animals. And you'll have a great time going through the Crescent City. I hope you guys get it because I don't want it. I, I could go another five months, six months without having to go to Crescent City again. And with my luck, you watch. Tomorrow morning I wake up, 1910 is going to be on my dispatch for tomorrow. That's the store number for Crescent City. I sure hope not, but uh, I hope they send me somewhere else. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was it was a good day. I mean, I, like I said, driving's driving. Um, you can't always just drive straight. You gotta you gotta have some Indy car practice, right? Drive your truck like an Indy car racer uh, through the hills. So. Guys, this is Phil from Walmart. If you're thinking about Walmart, you see how much fun I'm having. Come on and join the team. You can drive through to Crescent City as well. That's if you move out here. Now, if you're somewhere else, maybe you got like the tail of the dragon or something that you get to go through. Uh, I don't know. Hey, don't do it. Don't 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 take your semi through the tail of the dragon. I don't think that's a truck route. I've seen videos of truckers going that way and believe me, they're not supposed to be. So don't take your tra tractor trailer through the tail of the dragon. And if, if you don't know what the tail of the dragon is, take a look on YouTube, just type it in, tail of the dragon, and you'll find out exactly what the tail of the dragon is. And one day I'll get the bike over there and I'll take that route, but not in this. Not in this. All right. Driver number 40346. Where was I going with that? 40346. <coughs> um, Philip Delp, tell him I sent you. Drive for Walmart.com. Drive for Walmart.com. And that's the number four, not the four letters. <clears throat> or the three letters, depending on how you're looking at it. All right, guys. Have a good night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.